Welcome to the Shulamite Podcast, an extension of Shulamite Ministries and Shulamite.com, with weekly interviews and teaching with author and speaker Martha Kilpatrick and hosted by John Enslow. This weekly podcast is a way to stay connected to the ministry. So come experience anointed messages, not giving just another method, but a living impartation. Carol, I too have seen prayer as an obligation, Nicole, and, a, and an insistent work to do. And two major prayers that I've that I've had, I'll say in the in my current memory. One is for a young man who is so trying to make his life okay, so working so hard, and he had a uh, trying to have a family, raise his family, keep a job, and get an education. And oh, I just my heart just went out to him. And I got an email that he was in big trouble because he was so exhausted and he had a paper to write before midnight, and it was about midnight. And I said, Lord, what would you want to do for him? And the Lord said, what, no, Lord, what can I pray for him? He said, a miracle. Mm-hmm. So I said, Lord, give him a miracle. And God did give him a miracle. He got that paper done and got a good grade and graduated. One word. And recently, there was someone in a lot of distress on a lot of fronts. And the Lord kept saying, and it was so complicated and it's so big. And I kept thinking, oh, I'm going to have to spend hours praying on this to find out. <laughs> That's what I was responding. I'm going to pray for it. I want to. But, oh, my gosh, it's going to take, oh, hours to unravel the scrambled egg. And the Lord kept saying, stop and pray, stop and pray. And I finally obeyed him. I said, wait a minute. We're going to stop and pray. So I listened, and the Lord said, peace. And I said, peace, okay, is that all? (laughs) A little harder than that? This is a big problem. And then he said, shalom. And I said, okay, here's the prayer. Here's the prayer to proclaim. Here's what I proclaim, shalom. And I asked this person, do you know what shalom means in the Jewish transliteration she said no I said it means the power to destroy the authority that causes chaos we have the power to destroy the authority that causes chaos and so I spoke shalom on every area and things happened within hours that changed it to peace so I'm saying give me some one word prayers Lord those are lovely and easy (laughs) And, and I don't have to do all this work of seeking and searching and so forth. And somebody said, I'm too lazy to work it out. And in a sense, that's good. If we can just trust that he will give the prayer, do the prayer, give the impetus of the prayer, and we just wait till he comes and and it's just nothing to do. The, The mystery, one of the mysteries of the universe to me is the last words of Jesus. It is finished. And I've said, what is finished? Everything. His works are finished. All I have to do is reach up and receive that work. Everything's finished. So I don't want to go back. Remember I said, uh, hands folded in prayer on the mountain. Well, how? <laughs> That's right. That's I said, well, how do I do that? How do I do that? I mean, I thought that was a valid question. How do I do that, Lord, knowing full well that I'm going to fail? So I don't go there because I don't know how to do it, and I'm going to fail anyway, and so I resist it. I don't know if this is speaking to anybody else. I resist it. I don't accept it as his problem, and it's insane. It's just crazy. It's crazy. But it's typical. <laughs> it's just so simple. Just only back to the only what he's been speaking. Only believe. Only believe. And when you believe, you receive. And when you receive, you have it. And you, you know what? It's it's totally it's totally being a child, because when I. Years ago, when I 
I first began to pray, I just believed he would do everything. And he did. Oh, well, Uncle Jim is dying. Just don't let him die. Give him some more years, okay? It was just, it was asking him for everything. It was believing this verse right here. That he will carry out his own purpose and do it super abundantly. He will. He will do more we ask. And we have to ask in faith. You know, he says the only work is to believe, but even that I could say, oh, it's a work then. No, it's simply taking a verse like this one in Ephesians and going over it and looking at it, letting it stare at you, letting it enter you, just letting it take you over. It's called memorization and meditation, but it's not so much about learning it as it is eating it and letting it have you capture you, take you over, because it has the power to do that. So it's just looking at him in this word. It's really that simple. And then faith takes you over. You look, it said, you reminded me of this this morning. You said we'd, we're supposed to just look at him, or either John did. You're just supposed to look at him, and that's when you get the faith. That's what it says. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of faith. But when we're working out of work, we're not looking at him. Right. We're looking at work. That's what we're looking at. I know that. We're looking at work. And I'm looking at myself that I can't do it. And I'm miserable. Mm -hmm. it, it brings with it misery because it is death. It really and truly is death. And it's that, that veering off really. It's losing the faith. What does it say? In Romans, and it doesn't mean what we think it means. When we lose the faith, it's really falling from the realm of heaven down to the realm of earth. What is it? When we fall from grace. Fall from grace. Okay, that's it. When we fall from grace, that's really what we're doing. We're leaving truth. We're leaving the promise. We're leaving who he is. We're leaving beholding him. And we're coming back down here to earth and we're moving out of earth rather than out of heaven, yes. out from heaven. Yes. Yes. Okay, Carol, when you said, and I'm miserable, do you know what ran through my head? I said, that's true, but it didn't used to be true. Before I was born again, there were times when doing a good job succeeded in getting me what I was after, which was approval, which felt like love. Okay? So until you're born again, that is the pattern, and it's not 100% misery. Any more than your life without the Lord is actually 100% misery, which you don't really necessarily realize until you're on the other side of the wall, and you realize what you called happy was, in fact, just lighter shades of misery. <laughs> But in that time, you would say, oh, I had a good time at that party last night, you know, because it wasn't a total loss as far as you were concerned, but you had nothing proper to gauge it on because you had never actually met Joy himself. So how would you know? You know what I mean? But it wasn't always misery. So there's a part of us, I think, that does have to be broken. And these parameters, he's so happy to break us because we're not our own anymore. We, we're not only owned, we're in relationship. And for us to continue chasing that thing that we were born chasing is the equivalent, forgive me, but it is, of a husband and wife, and the husband wakes up in the morning and leaves $300 on the dresser for the wife. Is that not that instead of it being love, that is freely given, relationship that is there, trust, true intimacy, that it becomes a paid exchange because I continue trying to earn something he has given. I'm sorry to put it that crassly, but really it is taking, it is a base thing. And I think that's part of the reason he hates it so much because it doesn't speak well of him and it doesn't speak well of us. And it says this relationship is a business transaction. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, forgive me. Forgive me. But I have always, I've struggled because I've said, Lord, I, I don't understand why you'd be so upset because you know who we are. Why is it so repugnant to you? 
And I'm sorry, that, but I have asked that question. But I just had that picture, Carol, that that's the thing. He will not allow us to in any way, shape, or form be anything other than miserable when we are working to earn something because, no, but it's not because, as you said, he just wants to love us. And he just wants us to stop and say, I am loved. This is real. There is a commitment here. I am safe. Nobody's going anywhere. Nobody's walking away. What if you made vows and, oh, yeah, they weren't broken? What if, what if you know, I mean, his relationship, that's not, that's not even a possibility. So he's going to do what he has to do. He had to leave, lead Gomer out into the wilderness and speak softly to her because she was just doing the only thing she knew to do. I, hmm. But I just, I never saw before that once upon a time, I did occasionally get what I was trying to earn from people. My, my performance did, in fact, if it had never earned anything, then I wouldn't be who I was and I wouldn't keep trying. Well, maybe I would. I don't know. I guess it could be Don Quixote. <laughs> Plenty of other times in my life, tilting at windmills that never came to any fruition. But... There is something from the old that has to be completely broken and severed. And when you said that, when you said it's total misery, I thought, yes, it is, but it hasn't always been. But now it is, and that is as sure a mark of his love to me because of what that says. I belong to him, so I will not succeed. He will not let me earn something from my performance he will thwart me he will stifle me he will block me he will send me tumbling down a flight of stairs if that's what it takes to break me from this thing he will not let me be content be rewarded in this place that is so repugnant to him we hope you've enjoyed the shulamite podcast for all the latest from Shulamite Ministries, please visit us at Shulamite.com, where you'll find Martha's daily devotions, posts from GetAlongWithGod.com, and the online library of all of Martha's writings. At Shulamite.com, downloading the free Shulamite app is easy, and LivingChristianBooks.com is only a click away. Thank you for joining us on this journey to discover a God worth knowing.